YouTube, check it out. So what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get this thing ready to get the AC working on this thing. So I've got my compressor in place. I've had that there for a while. Today what I'm doing is I'm changing out my evaporator core right here. I've got the stuff I need and everything to make up my custom lines. So I think I'm gonna do that this weekend. I will make videos for that. I've gone ahead and swapped out the condenser co coil. You can see down there the plastic on the, um, ew, I need to paint this. Look at that, looking nasty, all the rust. Anyways, I've got the new condenser coil in there. So I'm gonna change out the evaporator coil right now. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So the first thing I'm doing here is I've got the truck up in the air, I've got it on jack stands, being safe, all that good stuff. I have read up on the subject, and it seems that the first step here is to take out this inner fender well right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that pretty straightforward. There's 13 millimeter sockets right here on these bolts. You're gonna pop those out. I think that the overflow tank might be bolted to it. Yes, there it is right there. And back here in the back also, we've got another bolt. I think those are the only two, so you're gonna have to pop those two bolts off before you pop that fender off. Um, so let's get to it. So it would appear that the battery box is also tied into that fender. So I'm gonna have to go and pull the battery. Okay, so it's a little bit more involved than I thought. I went ahead and pulled my computer out of the way. The little tray that holds my computer, three bolts here, hold this tray in place because there's one more 10 millimeter bolt down there holding this overflow tank to the fender. After that, the thing will just pop right out because I do have the bolt taken off my battery hold down right there that was also holding the battery box to the fender but after that it should just slide right out okay so once you've got that fender out of the way you can see you've got quite a bit of room to work in here it looks like what's going to happen and i'm not 100 percent on this because i've never done it but we've got these bolts here we've got one here one here uh, looks like one there one there and there's two on the bottom and then it looks like this case will separate once that happens. You're gonna to need to disconnect um, your line here if that's still connected. I don't have my dryer in place, so obviously this is not connected to anything at the moment. You're probably gonna to have to take this bolt out as well, maybe, just to kind of get a little clearance on this thing, get that thing out of the way. Yeah, so that's gonna be my next step here is I'm gonna take off these bolts here and see if I'm able to remove the evaporator core at that point. I may have to move some of this stuff out of the way because I just kind of threw everything on top of the engine. I didn't want to actually disconnect my overflow hose here. So I just kind of left it in place and tried to maneuver this out of the way, but it may have to come forward a little bit to be out of the way enough for this. So let's see what happens. First thing I'm gonna do is take these bolts out though. All right, for some damn reason, I've got a five and a half millimeter in there and that seems to work. I don't know why the hell I have that wrench, but I do, which is good because for some reason, this is some weird damn size, but that's working, so I'm not gonna complain. I didn't even know I had a five and a half millimeter. Hey everybody. 
Okay, so I've got all those bolts out, the six bolts going around the edge here, and uh, it still does not want to separate out. And upon further inspection, it looks like that bolt right there, not my finger, but that bolt right back there, is holding it to the firewall. It looks like there's another one hiding. Yeah, there we go, right there. That's kind of holding it to the firewall. And if we go up underneath the truck, it looks like this one and this one is also holding it braced up to the firewall. So it looks like I'm gonna be removing those bolts as well and trying again. So I've gone ahead and removed the 10 millimeter nut off of this. The one back here had this little plastic cover on it. I just pried that out of the way. Okay, so to get this piece out here, this left side, I'm pretty sure that once I get this to be able to separate, getting this side out will be easier than getting the other side out because as you can see, there's a freaking B8 right there in the way. So I'm gonna try to pull this side out. There's a couple bolts holding it in. You've got one here one back up in that corner there which is very difficult to see but i think you can see it right there kind of hiding and then underneath you've got one here right back behind that little bracket there's one now the trick is to get to the one back up in the corner you're going to need a little swivel socket for this one here so that's going to be kind of a pain in the butt but then i'm hoping this whole section will just kind of pull out of the way and then I can pull out the evaporator core. So let's see if we have such luck. So after much finagling, this is how I actually got that upper left bolt out of there is I put a little tape on the swivel to keep it from moving around too much. You're gonna need a thinner extension rod, which I only had one of those. I had the thicker ones like for the larger drive, but I was able to get the bolt out of there. It's a real pain in the butt, but as you can see, it's out over there in the top left corner. It's out. So from here, this thing should just pull right out, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way a bit. And go ahead and try to pull this thing out. Oh, looks like we've got one more little bolt pulling this. So let's grab that five and a half millimeter again and get to it. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here. I'm going to pull it out from the top side. Okay, so I think you probably saw what happened there. I, did, I was not able to get this whole piece out while pulling the evaporator core out, so I just went ahead and kind of finagled the evaporator core through. And this actually doesn't look too bad, except for the fact that it's kind of dirty. I'll show you. So this is what came out. I'm a little surprised that all this actually looks like it's in pretty good shape still. It's got some leaves all up in it dog hair looks like some sort of animal hair anyways but it doesn't look too terribly bad but I think since I've got it out I'm gonna go ahead and replace it anyways so the purpose if you're wondering for me replacing this was I'm redoing the whole AC system the truck is 22 years old it's a 98 and this is a year 2020 so 22 year old components I wanted to go ahead and just replace everything that way I don't have an issue in the future so that is my rationale for doing this so I'm going to go ahead and grab the new one, squeeze that one in there. I'm also going to clean out some of the leaves and stuff that are up in that box. I definitely don't want to put all that stuff back in there. And uh, I'm going to start putting this thing back together. I'm going to go ahead and give you the upper view. I'm just going to kind of finagle this thing back into position. Be careful not to hit the evaporator unit on stuff like that sticking out. I'm going to be very, very careful and gentle putting this back in. You definitely don't want to shove it in. So as you can see, I've kind of just ever so gently finagled it into position. 
And also be cognizant if you're not replacing it, which I probably should have. There's all this little weather strip here. You want to make sure that this is up and in position as well before you stick everything in there. So. And ever so gently, there's these little tabs you want to be aware of here. Make sure that your nuts are outside. See, so there's these two little tabs with the little slots. Make sure you get those in there. And then you're ready to go ahead slide everything back in place very gently very carefully I think I'm gonna go around the bottom side so I can see a little better what I'm doing see where everything needs to go, there we go. she's going back in Stickle back in Probably be a good idea to replace that weather stripping. And that would be a fantastic time to do that. In fact, I think I'm going to pause doing this. Ugh. And I think I'm going to go get weather stripping to replace that. Which this is a pretty inconvenient time to leave stuff taken apart. Considering how apart it is. But I want to make sure I do this right. So I think I'm going to go grab that weather stripping and put some more weather stripping in there. I think I'm just gonna get like the one-sided. All right, YouTube, so here we are, day two. I went last night up to the auto parts store and grabbed some of this weather stripping here. This is kind of like a rubber weather stripping instead of that foam stuff. I think this will work pretty good. I guess it's like a foam rubber sort of thing. But I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. It's got the sticky tape on it. I'm just gonna put it along this edge right here where you see the groove. I'm also gonna make sure I get some on the opposing side to go around that tube, make sure we get a nice airtight seal. I also took a damp micro, microfiber towel and wiped up inside here. There was a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, there was a lot of sand and dirt, etc. You'd be amazed at how dirty it was in here. So I went ahead and wiped all this out. Same thing with the inside of the truck. Went ahead and wiped all up inside of here, all up in there. I mean, it was just nasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that weather strip on there and shove that evaporator coil back in. I say shove, but I'm gonna gently place it back in place because you don't wanna mess up any of the fins or anything on there. So very carefully, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in place. All right, YouTube, so this stuff would not stick with the self-stick tape. So what I did was I cut it in half and I used a little bit of CA glue, which is basically just uh, super glue. And I just kind of glued it in place. It took me a while because you know I had to put a little glue there, hold it, keep it from moving, put a little more glue, hold it, keep it from moving. But this is gonna ensure that I got a nice tight seal, airtight seal all the way around the edge and we're not gonna be sucking in engine air into the compartment. So now let's go ahead and put this thing back in. Okay, now this is probably one of the main reasons you're watching this video is how do you get this freaking bolt back up here in this upper left corner of this box? Well, here is my uh, is how I think I'm gonna get back in there. What I've done is I've taped the bolt to the socket and then I've put some tape on the swivel to kind of make it more firm so it doesn't just flop around as I stick it in there. And then I made sure I got a 3 8 um, socket extension because I was using the fatter one here that I have for my half inch drive, but I wasn't able to have enough clearance because you've got to kind of stick it right up in between this little gap here. And I know the lighting's bad right now, I'm inside my garage, but I wanted to show you how I'm going to attempt to do this, and I will let you know if I am successful. There's no way I'm going to be able to record it because I'm probably barely going to be able to see what I'm doing, let alone record. So I apologize for that. But I will try this method and let you know if I am successful doing it that way. All right, so to follow up on getting that one bolt back in, I was not successful just using that socket as I set it up. I ended up taking off the hood. I pulled the two bolts off the fender in there, pulled the two bolts off the fender in here so I could just kind of get a little bit of wiggle room in this fender. You can see I'm able to pull it back maybe an inch or less, but that did give me enough clearance to get that bolt up in there. And if you look, it's got the tape on it still, which I really don't care. The only thing I care about is that this box is secure in the truck 
and it is, so I'm gonna put everything back together. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory from here. Obviously, you just put everything back where you got it from, so uh, not too terribly difficult to put everything back together if you can get to this point. But I just wanted to share my experiences with you guys. I hope this makes your process a little bit easier. Either that or um, it helps you plan your job a little bit better. So all in all, it may just be easier to finish removing this fender. I think there's maybe one bolt down there holding it and then another couple bolts up here holding it. It may just be easier to pull the whole fender off. That way it gives you plenty of room to access everything at work. Um, so I would kind of recommend that if you could since you're going to have to get almost to that point to put that one bolt back in. You can get it out without moving the fender, but getting it back in just isn't going to happen. The other thing is, remember, five and a half millimeter for these stinking bolts here. Weird size. Be aware of that. And also make sure you get some sort of weather stripping to go in here because um, you want that box to get sealed back up. I also put weather stripping on both sides of this. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Make sure I got weather stripping on both sides of that. So, again, thank you for watching. I hope this helps you out uh, with your job. And uh, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you think this information was useful. Thank you very much, YouTube.